if you're scratching your head trying to understand how to read the Telstra before you dig plans and you want some insight to use on your next project, you've come to the right place. Watch until the end as I go through just what to look out for when you're on site. Where do we start? There's numbers, lines, everywhere. But what do they all mean? To make it simple, let's go through some of the main things you need to know. How do you get the plans? You might already have them, but if you don't, you need to go to Before You Dig Australia, eyda.com.au. The old website was 1100.com.au. Either one, put into Google, you'll find it. When do you need to request them? You really need to request the plans two days before you're planning to excavate, 48 hours. That gives Telstra enough time to send you over the plans and information should anything change within that time. What you get back is a mains cable plan and a cable plan. You get two sheets. Both sheets need to be read in conjunction so you know exactly what's been covered on the different pieces of paper. The mains cables, I like to think of them as they're mainly the thing we're worried about. It's bloody important. It's the fiber optic cables, it's the large pair copper cables, and it's the stuff that's quite important. The cable plan shows utilities or underground communication cables leading to properties and the distribution network. How long are the plans valid for? They're actually valid for 60 days. Some before you dig plans are valid for 30 days and some others 14. So you just have to be mindful. When you're doing Telstra, be careful because you need to renew them every 60 days. How accurate are the plans? They're indicative only. Spatial accuracy, non-existent. They're a quality level D to the Australian standard, which means take it as a grain of salt. They're on the plans. They need to be verified. Where can you find the symbols? Luckily, when Telstra sends you out the dial before you dig plans, they'll send you the maps. They'll send you a duty of care statement. They'll send you how to read the plans. And they'll also send you a sheet with information on people who can help you find those cables. So what's on the plans? The Telstra network consists of pits, cables, conduits, manholes, there's foot world chambers, footpath chambers, and anything associated with the Telstra cables entering properties. There's lines indicating where the cables run. We have information on the conduit configuration and the cables that exist inside those conduits. We've got the amount of cables that are inside a certain duct and how many twisted pairs are inside. The plans actually show you the distance between two manholes. We've got the cable information. It also on the mains cable plans will show you depths and offsets. And this will be displayed as a fraction with the cover over the offset measurement. We have the termination points where the cable network enters a property and terminates at a certain location. It's also got third party cables and fiber optic breakout pits and other networks utilizing the Telstra network. One thing that's really tricky is it also shows underground cables as well as overhead wires. You may have noticed in Sydney that there are telegraph poles which will connect telephone wires straight from the pole to the eaves of the roof of the house. What you really need to know and be careful about when excavating on site is optic fiber. You'll see this in text on the main cable plan where it is short for SMOF or single mode optic fiber. Anything OF on the plan, be very careful about and dig with caution. Who can you call if you're not sure where Telstra cables are located? Your first point of call is check the number on the Telstra duty of care statement. And if you have any questions, give them a buzz and they'll be able to help you out with any information that you require about reading the plans. You can also call a certified locating company and Anyone certified to locate utilities in Australia will be able to help you out with Telstra. We've created a guide on how to read Telstra plans. If you want a copy, visit the website at the link below and we'll send it straight over. So there's a lot of symbols and a lot of information on the plans. It all is quite confusing to be honest when you're looking at them for the first time. I've highlighted some symbols here on the page and these represent the cable inside duct configurations. So generally you'll see the material type of the duct configuration, which is in some of these cases A100. They give you the material make, which is asbestos, A for A100. So on the conduit configuration, it'll give you how many ducts there are, the configuration that they're laid on the ground, the material type of the ducts, 
and the diameter of the conduits. In some of these cases, I'm just going to pick out one here. It has eight ducts. They're in a configuration of two by four, and it's made of asbestos cement, which is the A, and the diameter of these conduits is 100 millimeters. Once you know how to find that information of what's buried below, it's going to help you along the way. We also have information on third-party providers of communication network. They're represented on the mains cable plans. The easy way to spot these third-party fiber optic cables are they're orange, and with the information next to it, it says other carrier, OC. Most of the times, there's a breakout text next to it. So once you see breakout, third party, or other carrier with an orange conduit, it's most likely a third party network. There's a lot of pit information. So you're gonna see round circles, and inside those circles, you're gonna have numbers or letters. They could be one, two, three, four, five. Generally, they're like a four pit or a five pit, which is a, just a single lid rectangle. And the numbers represent the size of the actual Telstra concrete lid. They do go up to multiple concrete lids, which is a six pit, eight pit, and nine pit. And you'll find multiples of two concrete lids or three concrete lids. The larger pits you'll see on the plan are rectangles with a diagonal black and white cut through them. These represent the manholes or the footpath access chambers. These chambers are quite large. So the manholes and footpath chambers are something to be a little bit careful about because they're generally housing the major fiber optic cables. There's a lot of information on the plans. A lot of it may be unnecessary for you to fully understand, but all you need to know is what it is and the key components of that, which is the major copper cables and where they're running. Another key feature, which is quite handy to know, is the distance between each pit or manhole. Telstra will give you the distance between manholes or pits up to one decimal place. So when you see a distance, for example, 32.0, that's indicating that between the two manholes, that conduit run is 32 meters. This is quite handy when you're outside the metropolitan areas because there are some cases where the pits are buried. And when using this information, you can say from one known point, the cable is 120 meters away. So you can either step out or measure that distance and it's going to put you in a very close location to where that buried pit is. On the mains cable plan, there is indicative measurements on the cover and the offset of these conduits. You can measure it from the offset of the boundary line to the surface level. These measurements are an indication, so use them as a guide only and verify with locating and potholing. The cable Telstra plans indicate lead-ins from the street into private properties. That will show you how many twisted pairs are inside those cables, what conduit material and size is entering the property, and the distance between the street to the termination point. So all quite handy when you're working out where the lead-ins are buried. If you're looking for help on how to read the Telstra plans, feel free to reach out, send us an email, screenshot, send the plans over, and we'll be able to help you out as best as we can. I hope this quick overview on how to read Telstra plans has been helpful. If it has, please hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for what we have coming up.